autonomous technology can work at extreme high speeds. We know that industry has been working on the low speed automation, the robo taxi application for more than a decade, and a lot of progress has been made, but we've yet to see autonomous level five technology progressing to on highway speeds, and we know there needs to be a lot of testing and validation to do that. The second goal is to attract the best and brightest minds from around the world to focus on this challenge of autonomous mobility. We know that there's a global competition for talent right now, and every industry wants AI, machine learning, computer scientists, not just automotive, aerospace, life sciences. And so for those of you who are here, most many of you are from automotive-related media or you care about autonomous vehicles, understand that we have 200 plus of some of the smartest computer science, AI, robotics engineers working on this challenge. Most of them are PhD students, some of them are full-time faculty, so we feel we're making a contribution to the whole industry by developing this talent pool. And the third goal is to do things like today, to demonstrate what we're capable of at events where people can see these cars race uh, and get up close and understand that autonomous technology is capable of doing amazing things. And hopefully that wins some hearts and minds, people who are skeptical of autonomous technology thinking either it's not safe or it's not ready yet. They can see the AI drivers doing what only the most elite human race car drivers are capable of. Uh, today's event, we had six teams qualify uh, for the competition. We ran already this morning some time trials, and that helped set the grid for our passing competition. And I believe we've completed the, the quarterfinal of the passing competition. So now we're going to be running the semifinals and the finals. When I talk about the passing competition, I'm gonna give you just a little bit of sense of, of what the rules are and how this works. So two cars go out onto the track at the same time. The lead car has to maintain a common speed initially at 100 miles an hour. And the chasing car, the attacker, has two laps to pass that car at 100 miles an hour. Then they switch roles. The other car becomes the defender, and the, and the car that was passed becomes the attacker, and they have two laps to pass at 100 miles an hour. And we do this over and over again at increasingly higher speeds until one car either cannot make a pass or Sometimes there's accidents, right? And that determines who moves on to the next round. Uh, we chose this format because we feel like it was really pushing the technology to the edge, but not so far that we have all the cars on the track at the same time, we have a big wreck, and we're not learning anything from it. Uh, also, if you think about highway speeds and, and vehicles on highway, if you're trying to test these systems, most of the time in highways you're gonna encounter one other car at a high speed, they may overtake you, and so that's what we're trying to test and validate. Um, we have uh, a crowd here that are all CES attendees, so this is a partnership with CES. Uh, they're providing busing from West Hall out to the track, um, and uh, uh, so you've got to be a CES attendee to come in person. However, there is a live stream uh, in partnership with AWX that is on Twitch that is broadcast around the world. That should be starting uh, in about a half an hour or so. Um, and uh, our audience that is interested in this it's a mix of technology enthusiasts, but also we're seeing increasingly a lot of young people that are in STEM robotics clubs are seeing this as something they could aspire to. They say, man, maybe I could be part of a race team sometime in the future. Uh, we ran a race recently in Texas, at Texas Motor Speedway, and we had over 2,000 STEM students from area high schools that came just to see this because they were so fascinated with the, with the technology. Um, you know, I don't have any favorites today. All of our teams are, 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 are winners in my mind, uh, but certainly we've seen really high speed performance from uh, Polymove team, which is re uh, from, represents the Polytechnic of Milan in Italy, uh, partnered with the University of Alabama. Technical University of Munich has also uh, run a lot of high speeds. TII Euro Racing, which is Technology Innovation Institute out of UAE, partnered with University of Modena in Italy. They've been running at very high speeds. And, and finally, there's a fourth team that has really come up since last year, and that's KAIST, the Korean Institute for Science and Technology. And I think in the qualifiers, in the time trials, they, they definitely set their speed record for that team, and they're right up there now, uh, going at 160 miles an hour and plus. So we've got four teams that are really at the edge, uh, and then others that are still working to, to progress uh, their AI drivers. Um, I'll stop here, but I, before I take questions, I do want to introduce one of our sponsors, um, we could not do this without the support of industry, government, and academia. This is really that triple helix of getting all three of those worlds to come together to support these kinds of events. This is not a, a money-making enterprise. We're not selling a lot of tickets. 
Uh, we run as a nonprofit. We're based in Indianapolis, Indiana. So we need our sponsors. And one of those is Aspire, an impressive organization, fairly new organization, but impressive in what they've been able to do in just a few years uh, to really transform the, the, the world of innovation and technology development in Abu Dhabi and maybe even more broadly within the UAE. So, uh, Tom, would you like to say a few words about Aspire and why you guys are here today? Thank you very much, Paul. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here in, uh, in Vegas this week. Uh, I'm, uh, my name is Tom McCarthy. I'm Executive Director of Aspire. Aspire is the technology program arm of Abu Dhabi's Advanced Technology Research Council. Our goal is to uh, transition technology to use faster. So we're taking proof of concept and we're bringing it to use faster. We do that across a number of priority sectors. In addition to transportation, we're in, involved in healthcare, in uh, food security, and in uh, defense and security. Um, in addition to the participation here, uh, at, uh, at, C, at, uh, at the ISE challenge today. We're, we're also involved in a number of other challenges across the broad spectrum um, of technology. And because at Aspire, we do three things. We incentivize uh, the application of research that's taking place at research uh, institutes and research uh, universities in Abu Dhabi. We uh, help to transition uh, from our own in-house research center in the Abu Dhabi in the Advanced Technology Research Council, that's TII, we help the transition of technology developed there to the market. And in fact, uh, we have a TII team participating in racing here today. And the third thing we do is we mount our own challenges. And currently, we have an international robotics challenge, which is a uh, combined uh, 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 autonomous uh, uh, sea-based vehicles and drones in order to uh, identify and uh, recover um, uh, sort of identified objects out at sea, and that will have its finals at the UMEX event in February 2024 in Abu Dhabi. We're also partnered with the XPRIZE Foundation for the Feed the Next Billion Challenge, and we're also uh, currently uh, involved in a, a, food, a food technology challenge in Abu Dhabi, which will come to its culmination uh, uh, next week, actually, uh, when we're back. So we have a broad-based mandate that's about essentially transitioning technology to use faster. And as Paul said, the beauty of racing is racing allows us to demonstrate the capability of technology at its limits. And that's been, throughout the, the history of uh, auto transportation, that has always been the, uh, the goal, to actually push and get acceptance uh, among the general public when they see things happening at high speed. If things can be safe at high speed, then they can be safe for the rest of us. And, you know, unfortunately over the last number of years, when you look at the surveys that have gone on, you know, they're finding that people are less uh, confident in autonomy. Uh, in road transportation. So what we're doing in terms of being involved in car racing is really going to have huge benefits for, for the economies, for, for the ability for uh, the OEMs, the original manufacturers, to go and invest and see a potential return on their investment in real time. So the beauty of what we're doing uh, by mounting challenges is to actually bring about the application and use of technology sooner. Thank you very much for the opportunity to talk to you today. Thank you very much, Tom. Um, so I can open it up to questions now, and uh, I'm happy to start with whoever, whoever's got one. Prizes that you've learned from these challenges about autonomous technology that came out of the blue that you didn't realize? I don't know if I would say it came out of the blue, but I think one of the surprises has been um, how complicated it is to get systems of systems working together. So it's one thing to have a really good LiDAR and a really good supercomputer, and a really good drive-by-wire system, and good radar, um, and even good code, right? But to get all of those different systems to have to work together under a high-pressure environment like that race car needs to be out right now, we don't give you 10 more minutes or 25 more minutes, um, and then to see them perform in those edge cases. Uh, so I think the, the whole concept of systems integration is we've learned a lot about. The other I would say is um, packaging and, and the ability to maintain the safety and the functionality of autonomous systems. If you look at a lot of autonomous prototype vehicles now, and even some of the vehicles that are operating on the roads, go open up a trunk, you see server racks with still a lot of wires hanging out of them. Um, what we're proving out is that you can put those systems into something as small as the cockpit of a 
of a race car and you can crash it at 150 miles an hour and still have those LIDARs and those supercomputers function in 15 more minutes. Uh, uh, you know, uh, not, not, not to fail, we may have to repair the car around it, but we can get the car back up and running often very, very quickly. Um, so that's teaching us a lot. Um, the other thing I would say that's been, I, I don't know if I'd say this is a surprise, but it's incredibly important, and one of the reasons why these prize competitions are so critical is the level of cooperation and partnership that we're seeing among the teams. Um, yes, they want to win. Yes, they, they're in this to, to have the glory of taking that uh, first place. But when we see wrecks or we see problems, um, everyone comes together and shares their learnings. And we're all kind of working on this journey under this concept of advancing autonomous mobility. And so just that level of cooperation and partnership Frankly, I don't think you probably see that in Formula One or IndyCar where it's a, it's a business, right? These people are in this for their livelihood. These people are really doing this not necessarily because of their livelihood, but because of the passion they have for addressing these challenges. And have any of these data sets been um, migrated over to OEMs? Yeah, absolutely. There are partnerships between some of the teams and, and OEMs. I would say certainly the component suppliers, maybe more so than OEMs. So. Okay. Luminar, for example, gets lots of data from our, our test runs and uses that to improve their LiDAR technology, right? Um, so I think, uh, you know, OEMs are also starting to take notice, and some of them have partnered with individual teams to begin to look at migrating some of their code into OEM applications. Did you want to add anything? No, I, I mean, I guess when you talk about the surprises, I think what one wants surprises in some ways, because, I mean, if we want to educate the AI, we need to get data and information, and I think the... Uh, I mean, you know, the objectives that were set out with A, to get a car racing around the track at speed, B, to be able to get two cars on the track if we're able to pass them out. I think these are huge achievements that uh, we've got to recognize. Obviously, um, the, um, you know, each of the individual teams will have learned things from each other, uh, but there is that little bit of competition, which is the great thing in science. You know, you know, you know all the great discoveries are about that race today, and so I would think, you know, surprises are a good thing. If you can, if you can learn them, because I think that's where you know you get real data to improve next time out. Thank you. Any other questions? All right. Well, um, you all have the opportunity. I know there's we, what we try to do is create a viewing area for media that lets you go right up to the wall at the end of pit lane. So hopefully you can get some.